Hello, hello, hello! Welcome in chat! Hello, chat. Today is another episode of Info Dump in Season 2. You know, the season that we're actually going to post on YouTube because we're going to remember to post the VODs before your computer implodes and you lose all of them. So there's like five hidden, ep the, like the apocrypha of Info Dump is hidden somewhere in, in cyberspace. But yeah, this is our guest today, Christina. Christina, go ahead and introduce Woo! yourself a little bit. Hey everyone. So, um, yeah, Spills and I go way back to uh, when we uh, used to live in the same dorm under the same international hall. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Good times. We bookends the hallway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Actually, yeah. We lived in this. Um, so the our hall was divided into different um, like little units. So like we lived in the Spanish wing. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so bilingualism, woo! <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, um, hello, everyone. I don't really do much. I just kind of sit around, uh, making, uh, really cringe content for the internet in my room. So, you know what? <laughs> uh, check me out on all socials, Noodle Nirvana. Uh, yeah. Right? Ooh, anyways. <laughs> I mean, speaking of making cringe content in my stream, right? Like, we, I, I feel you. Right? But anyways, info you're, dump. But, you're, but your stream's entertaining. No. Huh. Hey, you could be entertaining and cringe, right? That's internet culture. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Brad, info dump. Uh, I know, so if you're new to info dump, folks in the audience, um, info dump is a neurodiverse podcast that I started, and the idea is to uplift neurodiverse, neurodivergent stories through the process of info dumping, and also to elevate info dumping itself. Uh, and I started it because I was bullied a lot in grade school for info dumping, for just going off on a topic that I love. And so I decided to say, fuck it, we're going to elevate the experience. We're just like, info dumping is a good thing. We don't need to keep on, um, you know, staying with these neurotypical structures of society. It's just in conversation and of what's appropriate to share about your interests. Fuck them. We like what we like, and we want to talk about it. Yeah. So what are we talking about day today, Christina? Musical memory. So musical memory. So um, I was recently coming across this um, Twitter user who, you know, they talk a lot about um, different like how your brain just kind of process things like in a different way that might not be like so common to other people or might be kind of strange um, or a little offbeat. And so the more I started to like read up on this kind of on like hyperfixations and all of that stuff, I realized that a lot of these hyperfixations came up as the playlist that I made on Spotify. Now, um, you know, like I've kind of like asked like different friends you know like if you like when you create playlists like what is it that you do and so usually it's like oh you know if i if i want to feel like a certain mood or if i like a specific genre or if i'm just like saying you know fuck it like i'm yeah. just going to just random play like a bunch of different things and see what comes up right right um but very few people that I've talked to actually categorize their memories through playlists. Now, um, I've gone back. Um, so I started this when I was a sophomore in high school, right? right. And um, the way that I did it was I went back through my memories up until I think about the fourth, no, till about when I was like kindergarten through like second grade when I used to live in California. Um, and then I started chron like putting a bunch of songs in chronological order per like with each um, school year or with school grade, right? Mm -hmm. So I have playlists from kindergarten all the way to actually now, which is what I would consider my second gap year um, after college graduation um, as a way to um, shelve each and every single one of my memories in order right um there's like 
I <laughs> I have this thing where I just kind of get really like caught up in like my head and in like my memories and I overthink and overthink and you know that's probably something that a lot of people relate to you know just like the process of overthinking like everything that happened in the past you know what could have been what could I have done better right, right. um but uh in my case I think I the way that I kind of deal with it and in order for it to like stop becoming like um what is it such a problematic influence right or like obsession like in my day-to-day life I just you know kind of like um in Harry Potter where they have the concept of the pensive right so it's like anybody withdraws a memory and then puts it inside of this like little uh pot of memories like so to speak if you haven't watched harry potter um and whenever they want to learn from something or whenever they want to like revisit anything they just go inside the pensive and then you know like they see everything like as it was right right and i feel like you know uh uh, psych- like psychologically whenever we go back and revisit memories we have a tendency to kind of alter them a little bit subconsciously like it's not like we're intentionally doing it um but we go back into these memories and then we start to generate memories of memories and right. then we re- when we revisit it again it's like a memory of a memory of a memory and right. so on and so because i didn't want my memories to like fall under like corrupt data or whatever yeah, corrupt data, I um, feel that's why <laughs> yeah that's why i wanted to keep them in like perfect like chronological um order right so right. then that way i would be remembering in the most like accurate sense like what had happened and like what year and like how i felt at the time makes sense so i relate with um i have a lot of memories through sound as well sound and smell are my two that really that almost always get me um so when i can but i don't construct playlists like i hadn't really thought of constructing a playlist until this summer when you and i interacted on twitter kind of reconnected because you had posted hey if anybody wants me to make a playlist about like my impressions of you or my my ideas of you and what i think of you hit me up and i was like i'll take i'll take the bait here i'll bite this sounds awesome and i listened to that playlist like straight through it was awesome uh and really did it did capture you're really good about capture you you i mean you're you're good at representing sound like what memories you have through the songs you pick and how you pick them i think you're a master at crafting playlists personally um thank you but when i like so like what i was thinking like how, how do i construct like what music am i listening what what music i'm listening to on a given day like right now in the background i've got animal crossing new horizons music playing um you know because when i play that i'm thinking of you know just you know, i call it galaxy brain there's actually an emote on my channel called uh like spills one dreaming is what the tag is and i'll i can send you the photo or you can just see in my chat another time but it's just like galaxy eyes and just sort of out in space. And so like an Animal Crossing and especially the soundtrack serves as this, you know, avenue to galaxy brain and just sort of thinking and uh, thinking about the stars, really. But the, when I'm like driving or when I'm working out or when I'm gaming, I'm more of a I want a whole hell of a lot of options in a playlist. And then I sort of craft it as I go, just like with my streams. I'm not great at making um, like schedules some about ADHD, right? So mm-hmm. I, uh, I will, but what I'm really good at is thinking about what I want to do that day instead of expanding on it. And just in my mind, it just keeps popping up and popping up and popping up. And every time a thought pops up, I'm just like, well, what should I, you know, what should I go off of? How, how is this going to go this way? How is this going to go that way? And that's kind of how I plan my content, my streams. I've been thinking about this all day. Like, where am I going to go with this? What am I going to do with this? But, um, what I was saying, but, but like, it's just interesting to see somebody else's perspective on how music and memory are so connected. I think, um, mm-hmm. for example, My Mother's Lullaby is a song that evokes great memory and emotion. She actually wrote her own lullaby. Um, wow. Yeah. And music's been a big part of my life for a long time. Um, but yeah, I th- there's a question in the chat that I wanted to get to that was really interesting. Um, so speak, so when we were talking about bilingualism in Spanish Hall, James uh, asked, so speaking of bilingual, do you think it, that do you feel that knowing two languages makes it easier or harder to remember songs in either language? Do you find yourself listening to songs you listen to 
before you were as good at the language to re-understand it. And I'm interested to hear your perspective of this because of the differences in our bilingualism, right? Uh -huh. Because, you know, because I, yeah. I, I learned late in my life the language of Spanish, whereas for you, it's been around in your life, right? And mm -hmm. you've had, you, you and I have very different experiences as bilingual. So I really want, I think this is an interesting question to explore. So I, first, I want to hear from you. Yeah, so... I actually really like this question because um, the first thing that came to my head. Um, so I so I was born in Peru um, and I didn't move to the United States until I was about four. Right. And so um, at the time, like in the early like in the late 90s, early 2000s, um, there were a lot of commercial. Uh, there were a lot of Peruvian commercials that used a lot of American music. Um, and so it would be it would be kind of weird because like you would be watching this um, commercial in your native language, but then you would like hear um, music that was in a different language. Right. And the one the song that I remember the most, oh my gosh, like I I forget the title, but it was like the one that's like the one that goes ain't no mountain high, high enough, enough. Ain't, ain't no, no mountain valley low, low enough, enough. Oh, valley low ain't enough. no yeah. river wide enough yeah i really love that song take it away <laughs> yeah that's the very first um song in english that i like started processing as like a little kid and at first I had like no idea what the song was about because it was in English. But I was like, huh, this is like kind of catchy, like in my little three-year-old head. Um, and so there were certain tunes that I like, I started hearing melodies a lot, like way before I started hearing like the actual lyrics, right? And so, um, you know, it's like in that, in that bilingualism, like you kind of, you you start to like hear definitely like melodies way before like you start to like really mm -hmm. process the lyrics and like really understand it like um you know like i listen to a lot of k-pop i listen to a lot of uh russian music and um in those like languages like i don't know korean i don't know russian right but like i hear the melodies and like i'll look up the lyrics and like still try to like resonate with the feeling so really like it's the feeling that powers my memory maybe not like so much on the lyrics so to speak so right um in that sense i would say like it makes it like it, it doesn't make it easier or harder necessarily to remember like music in either language it's just um music can still connect us right right through emotion because emotion is universal so yeah so where I come from with my experience of bilingualism is fairly similar because I, it's also not even just my bilingualism, it's my experiences with ADHD and neurodiversity, where I experience a lot of life through sound, but not like sharp, specific sound, if that makes sense. Like the general atmosphere of a, of, of a tune. Um, and that's because like, for example, sometimes I will struggle to understand speech unless I'm lip reading. Um, mm -hmm. I have some auditory processing issues. So I will, I can lip read and understand the context of the sentence, the grammar, the structure, the vocabulary used. Uh, but then I hear the tone and it's entirely different. I kind of, it's almost like the scene from Ratatouille with the grape and the cheese, where it's like you mix the sound and the, and the grammar and the language structure, and it's yeah. entirely different. Sometimes mm -hmm. I get that, and sometimes it's just on the separates. Uh, different there's streams of color. Um, and that's why I think for me, um, while I was learning Spanish, um, Spanish songs sort of hit more of the, the one, one or two, but not together things. Um, and then, but then as I learned more Spanish and understood it and learned the language and could understand the context and more meaning, cause there can be meaning conveyed through sound and there can be meaning conveyed through language. Then it felt like the two together, the, the mixing, the wonderful colors, just, a just, you know. A perfect painting in my mind um mm -hmm. and i think that something i experienced as i learned spanish is that i started making more mistakes in english as i learned spanish and now it's at a point where sometimes i'll forget a word in spanish and english or i'll know it in both but don't know where to go with it if i want to spanglish it what route i'm gonna take because it's it, they cover overlapping but separate parts of my identity right mm-hmm um where there's definitely like i think that 
and this is really going down a rabbit hole with from this question, but like, I uh, I get into like I remember I sort of construct a personality in a in a in a language based on the experiences I've had while speaking it. If that like, that's and I'm gonna go off of that, where I um it's not I'm like the same person. You know, it's not like I'm pretending to be somebody I'm not in one language or another, but how I represent myself, the 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 pace, the tone, the pitch goes off of the conversations I've had and how I feel people perceive me as a speaker of that language. And I'm not mm. sure that that's necessarily a healthy thing that I do. It might, it might, I might need to talk to my therapist about that one. We'll see. But like, I, it's something that happens for me where I tend to, and it might be why I do well as a streamer. Um, I've been doing so well recently is that I, um, I know I can figure out over time what people want from me in a certain mm -hmm. register of speech. And then I figure out how to best present myself within the re the desired register to a degree. And then, mm -hmm. and then there's some stuff that's just fucking actually unfair. I'm like, hey, fuck you. But the stuff that's reasonable. Um, and for me, like, as a, as a speaker, as a um, speaker Spanish, I, you know, it's not something that I learned as a child. It's not something that I connect with my members of my younger self. It's almost like as I came into adulthood, I also realized the responsibility of speaking another language. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's because I, you know, I came of age and I came of the ability to speak Spanish um, about the same time. Um, where was I going with that? Um, do you feel like as like j not even just the music m musical memory but sound memory do you feel like when you were you know picking up english you had a similar experience where like the the rather two experience i was describing and do you feel like that's just something that you know influences speech for you and also how your music tastes are because i think that influenced my music taste in spanish that's where i was going thank god yes <laughs> um i was gonna go into because I was going to ask you this question next, where I was like, well, and did it influence the styles of music? Because I was going to say, yeah, because I, I listened to a lot more, like, up-tempo dance music in Spanish before I learned the language. And then as I learned the language, I've been drawn to a lot of the other, like, slower pace, some more ballads, some more love songs, some more folk music Ooh. since learning the language. I'm like, how, like, so it was like, how, does language ability influence taste to you? It influences, it like in a way, it kind of influences identity too. So let's see. Um, yeah, so I had some thoughts as you were talking about like the sonic processing. And, you know, in Spanish, um, my parents listen to a lot, uh, well, especially like my dad, because like my dad's like the huge music nerd in our family. And so he's like more on the sentimental side. And so we listen to a lot more like sentimental ballads right. in Spanish, in Spanish, which I like did not really resonate with. Um, and so in English, like I was able to adopt kind of like a different or new identity. And obviously, like I didn't know about it when I was like a kid. Right. right. Um, but like as I started growing up, it was like, you know, the more like. I guess like the female more like nurturing side was kind of in, like in this like Spanish capsule, mm. right? But like the more like tomboyish, like more masculine side was in English um, because that's where I started to, um, you know, like through, I guess like a kind of like a sonic processing and the way that you're talking about like, oh, you know, like at what register, you know, do I want to be like do i want to use to be perceived as like this certain way right? right um i would say and i've like had a lot of people tell me this too that like my register is generally a lot deeper in english than it is in spanish in spanish it's like a little bit more feminine a little bit more like oh, is that you, you know it's like more like on a customer service -y kinda, right kind of you know you know yeah but per, that, yeah like but that's like, performative in a way right yeah but like in english it's a little bit more relaxed it's like lower it's like hey you know like what's good it's like your frat bro friends like how's it hanging you know it's like um and it's that it's at that register that i felt like more comfortable in expressing myself within like the english language but within the spanish language like i don't really mind either like expressing like a part of like my identity that's like maybe more on like the feminine side um just because like 
it's it's become like second it's like it's like second nature to me you know like to express like a more like caring more like uh i don't know like any anything like you would associate with like traditional femininity like right. in that in that way you know yeah so, um so i'm gonna there's a series of messages that have been w been <laughs> meaning to inter interject with but i've been trying to think of the right style but from james because he's also bilingual so james Ooh. is somebody that i've known for eight nine years in a long time internet friend um he says, I would like to add my part on this. My mother knew Spanish well before me and often played Spanish songs. I would try to sing along, but ended up singing nonsense. Now that I know Spanish and go back to those, it helps me feel more connected to my childhood. The few memories that I actually retained through the trauma, LMFAO, in our UK, uh, you know, stuff like that, uh, and no Lamau. And then uh, as we were talking about, um, you know, listening to music that you don't necessarily understand the language. Um, I know a lot of people like La Chona by Los Tucanes de Tijuana, even though they don't understand it. They love the tempo and the flow of it, as it just evokes dancing. So while understanding the song can be good, it isn't inherently required to enjoy it. Kind of like with Gangnam Style. Everyone loved it, even though people who don't speak Korean likely didn't understand it. Um, and then finally, for me, I have different tastes based on language. In Spanish, I love the more calmed country-esque tones, or love songs. Whereas in English, I'm a total sucker for emo, rock, metal kind of things, for the most part. Don't care too much for country. Yeah. Thank you for the lurk, Elijah. Um, folks, we have to take our first ad break, because Twitch does this thing called pre-roll ads. Um, pre-roll ads suck ass. What they do is, if I don't run ad breaks every so often, and pretty extensive ad breaks, they force you to watch a 30 second unskippable ad at the start of my stream, and that sucks. Exactly, I w if I didn't have to run ad breaks, I wouldn't. If I could, also if I could just put a banner ad, that's what I would do. Like, that, like if you could just click off of it. Or if it was one of those five second ones that you could skip, sure. But they, they, they make ads stupidly. All right, we'll be back after 90 seconds. Um, yeah, so there's a question I wanted to ask. Uh huh. Also, oh, I'm not. My camera's not like in view, right? I mean, there's gonna be subscribers you can still see. Okay. So. Hi, subscribers. I'm going to like. Yeah. There we go. It's clean. Fair clean. enough. Um. <laughs> so I was gonna ask, is it okay with you if we talk like? Because there's a question like, how may I ask how you are neurodivergent from somebody who's neurodivergent as well as like. May I ask mm -hmm. the specifics? I said, I'll ask if you want to disclose that or not. Because that's not. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to. Okay, then cool. Sweet. Mm -hmm. uh, it's quotes yeah. list, Elijah. Q U O T E S L I S T. Uh, my channel has um hundreds of quotes. Oh, boy. So, yeah, we're rating all of them. There we go. Yeah. A chat ad that just has a big pop up for Raid Shadow Legends. Yeah. And also, <laughs> yeah. Hi, Manny. You got 30 more seconds in the ad break. I'm having tea in my new mug. It's pretty sweet. <gasps> Ooh, yay, merch. That's awesome. I'm going to make merch, like, mugs with the quotes on them. And I'm going to mm -hmm. put them, like, super fancy text, but it's just going to be just degenerate quotes from my channel. Degen Wait, oh, man. I remember there was, like, a quote that I really loved from, like, last time. Oh, I my... forget which one it was. Well, you can look on it the quotes. It was, like, this when you were... Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll definitely take a take a look. But yeah. it was like when you were playing, um, what was it, Stardew Valley? Yeah, yeah, that was good. Um, yeah. Also, all right, so we are off the ad break, and uh, let's start with the brief question from Brad, which was, do you, do you mind disclosing your, you know, what what you how you identify as with neurodivergency, or what you identify with with neurodivergency? Are you diagnosed or questioning of of different things or what 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 is your identity with it Ooh, and i can okay. say that i am so, if you want me to go first or if you want to go first either way um yeah you go first <laughs> so just for example i have adhd mostly inattentive type really uh and and i'm also clinically depressed and so those two have a very interesting mix different comorbidities how it affects my daily life um, but I'm diagnosed with both. Uh, and this is a stream that is, promotes 
questioning and self-diagnosis uh, for mental illness. You know, you generally know yourself better than anything. Um, but it does make a difference for some people to know which way or what, because our experiences with identifying as neurodivergence may be different if our diagnoses are different, right? Like, like we might, we may view it differently. So it's inter it's important to know or feel like I, I think it's important to think about that just because it it helps you like it helps with introspection that that's what I've noticed mm -hmm. um, yeah but yeah uh, so that's me what would you say yours your neurodivergency yeah. is so um you know I've had I've had like certain experiences where you know it's like with all of this like hyper fixation with this really difficult like ability to pay attention to a lot of things in my life like i'm not i'm not diagnosed as adhd right. um but there like there is like some attentive problem where it's like it's like too much of an obsession on things that i really should not even be thinking about and then not very much importance on like things that i should be worrying about like school um right. school for me has always been a very difficult thing for me to accomplish uh it's honestly a miracle that uh my college even gave me a degree in the first place <laughs> um yeah so i've always had like a problem with like time uh, like I'm chronically mm -hmm. late to everything including like even now in a pandemic where like I work from home like I should be on time to like certain things but it's like nope like time just like doesn't work in my head um, yeah I feel that which is something that I'm trying yeah it's something that I'm trying to like work on um, yeah but that's like on the neurodivergency part um, with like the whole like mental illnesses like I am diagnosed with borderline personality disorder um and and obviously like anxiety and depression you know like yeah all, those, all the comorbidities like, the, the trifecta it's it's the mental health um, cocktail yeah yeah um and so i've been i spent like a lot of time in quarantine trying to you know like check myself uh trying to see how best i can work with that um right in a way that's like healthy for me to process life uh and how it goes you know but not putting a lot of weight onto my friend's shoulders or not making them worry too much um yeah so um yeah you know uh i've been i've been kind of witness to like a lot of like really chaotic and really unnecessary things in my life uh Josiah's kind of uh witness to mm -hmm. some of the really chaotic moments in my life uh, um yeah so uh yeah I'm, I'm yeah. working on that <laughs> yeah so yeah and that's um that that will um that's a little good uh background for stuff I want to go into now we're getting back to musical memory um mm -hmm. the first question we wrote on our prep doc or you wrote on our prep document I should say how does music help us gain a better understanding of the world around us, of our experiences? Mm -hmm. Why is it a central piece for your experience? Yeah, so um, like I said, uh, you know, like everybody has different ways of processing the world around them. We either can like write it in a journal or we can play a video game or, you know, like we can you know make some art right? Uh, right and then express it that way um the way that i've always um expressed or like the way that i've always tried to like process and understand like what exactly is going on in my life has always been through again like music right and so um you know like in my childhood uh, uh i really um like i have a very strong bond to like disco um a lot of uh 70s songs 90s songs and like early 2000s music um because they remind me a lot of my parents and uh what was like going on um in my life at that time um i think that one of the reasons why music has always been such a huge part of my identity is because there was a lot of instability in my childhood um especially like earlier on um not not because of like my family or anything but because like we had a tendency to just kind of move around and so i never really had a chance to have like really deep and meaningful connections 
with individuals um and so kind of like as a way to like maybe like not feel so alone or so like isolated i would just uh, really submerge myself into these kinds of songs right? right um and so that's where like i started kind of like having that very like close like attachment to my parents um and so uh yeah so like music acted as that anchor that kept everything connected um it was like this in my head like a little figurative house where like i had all of these experiences and all of these like memories just kind of stored right uh and then like i would never feel like oh this is going to be taken away from me like pretty soon right right um and so at this time like i listened to a lot of like the beach boys the biggies uh beatles juanes madonna britney spears like those were like the groups like at that time yeah um and so like as i uh started growing up when we moved here to portland we moved twice um and so currently i'm living in the same house i've been living in since i was 12 right so um so while like the physical roots um were already established right um there was still like some like instability because like you know like as you are like starting to grow into your own like as an adolescent obviously you're gonna have a lot of clashes with your parents and especially if you start to develop several mental illnesses like at this time um in my culture especially like we well i don't really want to say like we because like i believe in it but like mm, peruvians like don't it it's still uh to get mental health services is a huge stigma and so it took my family like so long for them to understand like oh you know if somebody is like going through this with like a mental health crisis it's not like oh you know like we're gonna give you a pat on the back and say you're cured right? right um or like you know uh pull yourself up by the bootstraps and you'll get over it um <laughs> and so um because there was like a lot of that emotional instability um at that time in adolescence um i you know like it, that's when like music really started to become an obsession and like i said i established like this pattern of like cataloging all of my memories as a sophomore in high school and you know like through this kind of, through like all of these songs like i was able to express myself in a way that was normally stifled like right. in the real world so to speak and so you know like in the like kind of like what what you were saying just i like earlier um where like i made you a playlist and i was like okay like in my head this is like what i think yeah. like this is how i picture like just in like my head and in my memories like that's where like a lot of that kind of communication was coming from like right. i wasn't able to like really verbalize like my frustration or my anger or even like any like positive emotions really towards people so music was like the only way that i could really communicate those like really intense feelings across yeah and um if you if you guys like are aware of like borderline personality disorder uh like one like one part of it is like having that like really intense emotion right um and it gets really exhausting it's like it's like a roller coaster right you have like your highest highs and your lowest lows and it just gets super exhausting and so like as a way for me to kind of calm myself down um i would just like put in all of these emotions into a playlist so that i wouldn't harm myself or other people um and yeah it just kind of became like a very therapeutic practice for me and right. so obviously like bands at this time were like nirvana bc boys foo fighters gorillas arctic monkeys like you know the very like angsty groups but were also kind of like could also be kind of melancholy like in the case of the arctic monkeys so like i right. you know with these bands i don't know if you could tell but like i had a very deep uh tumblr phase yeah <laughs> so <laughs> i was like very much into that scene yeah. um and then with like adulthood um it just it just kind of continued to become habit to keep on uh putting like a really um like all memories into a chronological order and so uh now um especially like during the pandemic the way that i've been um kind of doing this is um i'll make a like i'll make a song 
based on different experiences or different things that I feel like I personally need to learn a lot from, right? So whether it's like failed relationships or things that I wish I could have done better as a student, right? Like I'll just create that into a playlist um, of all the songs that I feel like either reflected the time period or have like a message um, that I really need to like digest. And then I'll start processing things that way in order to like, um, you know, further my own like uh you know character development right. so to speak. <laughs> character development so. yeah uh i'm gonna i'm gonna bring something up from the chat and then i'm gonna relate to what you were saying um brad says to add my own opinion to this music and many arts are some of the most beautiful ways somebody can express their emotions even something full of hate and negativity can turn out to be oh fuck it's it scrolled damn it damn it um even something full of hate and negativity can turn out to become beautiful it also it's also a memory uh, all those songs as children that you'll remember forever. You can see it even in Alzheimer's. It's been proven to be effective in triggering memories. Uh oh, DC. Uh, one second, technical difficulty. Did, did you click down? Sorry, my bad. I just clicked for like a quick. Yeah, it's my. My uh, computer's just like awful. My bad. I'm <laughs> yeah, sorry. it's all right. It was perfectly out of space between messages. Not only that, but it's such a good way to see into other cultures. By listening to their music, you can get some insight into how they celebrate, dance, all the stories they pass down by generation. Music is just fucking awesome. Oh man, I get right. And then James says music can also show the way certain groups tend to feel. My Chemical Romance, for example, was not obviously not for everyone. It wasn't general music, but rather a group of people who came together to produce music for people who feel the same nihilism as them. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great yeah. form of expression. Um, but something you mentioned about, you know, dealing with, you know, pa emotional pains and traumas by, um, you know, through through that musical avenue. Through it's an a it's an avenue. It's a mechanism that you developed over time in response to not only interest but necessity, right? Mm -hmm. Um. But it reminded me of, uh, from, if you could see me now by the script, you know, take the pain to that stage, bro blow the roof off the place. And that idea of self-expression, that, that lyric from the song talks about, you know, how effective music is as an outlet, as a genre to express one's emotions, one's feelings, one's desires, one's interests, one's passions. And that's, and the way it ties into memory, because of the way memory works, right? It ties into, um, one song can touch so many different connections within the brain. It can relate mm -hmm. you to a childhood memory while also talking about your experience here and now. It can, the, the way the music bounces off the walls can even put you in a physical, like a kinetic memory. It was like, you know, remember where you were when you heard this song. I always think of Red Square when I hear Clarity now, right? Like there's- mm, Yeah, you know, there's, me too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So like the way that, songs can touch so many different areas of the brain makes them so cemented in our memory and that's why i think it's unique within that study to talk about how music affects our memories and how it brings the memories up um i see like moving with the um you know the music acting as an anchor um and having different genres as you go i wanted to go like this talking about the um sort of the bands that you had in adolescence and versus the bands you have now. Something I noticed about the adulthood bands is that there there's a lot more up tempo, upbeat, and like more like just rapid music. It's almost like you're the it's like more stimulation within the song, like rapid stimulation, rapid fire to make up for the the dull, the slow twitch of modern day life right now. That's mm -hmm. something that I was in was noticing. I'm not sure if you noticed the same or if it's just haha -ha song. Yeah. Cool. But I'm like that that's something that I I was like, hey, I think I see something. Like, that's something that I do, too. I listen, I've listened to a lot more up-tempo, fast-paced music since the pandemic started. And yeah. No, I have this specific playlist that's called Descent into Madness. Yeah. <laughs> um, That I've only created, like, during this time. And it's filled with a lot of this, like, up-tempo kind of music. Um, r Right now, like, the genre that I'm, like, currently, that I adore completely is hyper-pop. Hmm. and a lot of um a lot of like different artists like in within this genre have uh, i think like implemented like a lot of like industrially kind of tunes to what you know like a normal like pop structure would be and it like creates this fusion of just like 
chaos. It's it's awesome. Um, uh, for example, like Ice Peak, which is one of the Russian groups that I listen to. Uh, they're pretty awesome. A lot of their songs are like are very political. They're all about, um, you know, bringing uh justice to um, you know, like women, uh, especially like you know how like you know trigger warning um how like domestic violence isn't like quite uh treated very well in russia um at the moment um but yeah there's like a lot of like empowerment in like their kind of music and the way that the melody is like structured it's for some it can be very grating and i know that i definitely would not be able to like listen to a song to this these kinds of songs when i was younger right just because right. it's like it's not it's it's not manufactured like in the in the way that like normal um american like pop and rock normally are but um another great artist is uh sophie um yeah. who yeah recently passed away unfortunately mm -hmm. but she's like you know like i really do consider her like one of the pioneers in making th these kinds of like songs um even like i dabble in a little bit of like music creation like myself like i'll make some mashups and i didn't realize like how much of an impact like sophie had on like my own music creation too um it's just amazing like how you know like these artists and producers can have like such a huge impact on like not only like how you process information but also how you put that information like out into the world too like whether it's through like music creation or like any artistry that you might you know create so um and then obviously like daft punk daft punk's a classic yeah absolutely uh yeah and like joji's like a little bit more like on the low tempo side but you know it's like that's that's about as sentimental as i go yeah right? that's fair so, mm -hmm. um and then going to adolescence because that's those are bands that i listened to a lot in my adolescence and even into my early college years which is why when you sent me said playlist you know from from twitter interaction i was just like floored by how accurate and how like you really hit the nail on the head um with nirvana with foo fighters and gorillas specifically being sort of three of my top listened to artists during that time mm -hmm. um but like the the note i wanted to sort of revisit was expressing emotions that you weren't allowed or able to express to the people you wanted to connect with and there's a point in the chat from james that i wanted to bring up related to this um james says expression of emotions can be an art in itself Rather than pictures of tiny happy trees with friends, you hear about rainbows smiling down on people thinking about it being a wonderful world. The words and tunes can evoke a picture in your mind and set you at ease, alleviate fears, help you cope, etc. And that's just, I, I think that's an experience, th th this seems like, a, like an intersection of experience here, um, using music as, as your avenue for communication of these emotions, of these identities. Mm -hmm. And I was, go ahead. I was wanted to so wonder if there's some specific songs you want to bring up to sort of expand on some, some, some the things that are in the, the, the top left of your shelf here. That this... Yeah. So I guess like I also kind of wanted to make a comment about that too. Like, you know, sometimes I kind of get worried about our generation and how it's growing into this whole like um you know like how everything can be easily accessed through like our phones or computers um but um there have been some studies that have been made that you know the way that we relate to people has been decreasing over time right and so even though we are like at first sight the most connected generation you know through all of these like social media platforms and the internet we also are kind of distant in a way from each other um because you know like a lot of us are kind of glued to our devices um, in a certain way. And so I wouldn't be surprised if people, like if more people started to kind of feel this way in expressing like whatever emotions they can't really express through music, honestly, um, just because, uh, you know, with this anxiety, with like this increasing anxiety uh, to, you know, always like want to be at your best or to, um, you know, like be the uh, like the best version of yourself you can be and how you should present that accurately to the entire world. Like that's extremely stressful. 
Um, and so, you know, like there, are, uh, there are going to be a lot of moments where we're going to want to express like our genuine selves, but we really don't have like an outlet. So, you know, perhaps like we'll see like more of this, like, uh, music, uh, what is it? Like, I don't, music focus is what I'm trying to say. Like music focus, like right. more in the future. But, um, as for like songs, um, again, like I'm, I'm looking at like my more like out of left fields, like, <laughs> so like playlist, um, because I feel like that's the one that I personally like connect to the most. Mm. Um, like, uh, I don't know. Like I, I really like a lot of sleigh bells. Um, like not, not the yeah, instrument, but no, like slay, yeah. S L A Y. Yeah. Oh, right? no, no, oh, it's like, no, no, no. It's like sleigh as in like you're like on a sleigh okay right like it's spelled that way like oh else. um okay yeah I, yeah the, glad, glad to clarify Gl yeah. glad to clarify yeah so sleigh bells is a really good uh band that also has this kind of like jarring but sometimes like really happy like kind of music like it's it, it's like it's very hyperactive and like that's exactly what i need um then let's see um like again like uh sophie's a good one poppy um i've gotten a little bit more into her uh during the quarantine um i've listened to like some grimes too mm. um i think venus fly for me is like one of like the songs that really like i don't know like i feel like it expresses like who i am like at this moment in time um if you listen to the song it has like a lot of percussion in it um it's really like i don't know personally like, it, it feels really powerful um and yeah you know like uh songs like that uh ash nico is also like a really great artist um and yeah that's like pretty much all i've got cool. yeah um brad brings up uh one of his favorite bands artists is slipknot um, mm. saying, and he posted some of the lyrics, like, I don't want to get it back up, but I have to, so it might, well, might as well be today. Um, and saying that you can tell that the group has been through some shit. I can hear mm. me through your mic, by the way. You can what? I can hear myself through your mic. Is my audio going through your computer instead of the headset? No, no, it's going through the headset. Oh, that's weird. Huh. 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 Cause I, I can I can uh, I can I can hear myself, and I don't know if chat can hear me twice. Okay, can you hear yourself now? Uh, no, I cannot. Okay, I think it's cause like of the audio that's like coming out of here. It's also like coming through the speaker. So, hmm. shout out to Amazon for uh, <laughs> cheap headsets. Right, and making me run ads on Twitch videos and stuff. Right, it's all the same. Um, yep. yeah, and there we go. Sweet, we got we got it figured out. People are shit changing their mind. Fair enough, Elijah. Um, yeah, I'm thinking. Was there something else that I wanted to add? Oh yeah. Um, I think that recently I've been listening to a lot of soundtrack and video game music, and also some, mm -hmm. um, just DMCA free type music as well. Just because I've been streaming so much, and I've definitely been thinking more about the mood I put off with the music I play, that I mm -hmm. should. Like, for example, when I uh, play League, I'm going to want to generally put on more up-tempo music. I've been doing lo-fi beats, but it doesn't convey the emotion that I'm feeling when I'm playing League. And it creates a very different vibe that I'm not sure mixes well. And so I've been thinking about the atmospheric aspects of music in that regard, and that's why I've been listening to such, like, a lot of non, like, without lyrics music, uh, music instrumental music. Mm-hmm. Um... But yeah, um, let's see, where was I going to go with this? Um, how do you think, I'm just going to move to the next question, I think, down here, which was, how has music reflected the times and changing opinions of people in general? And then something I want to talk about with this mm -hmm. is, do you feel like songs have different meanings for different people? Yes. So, um, let's see, let me look at another one of my playlists. So, um, I, I really like Cold War history and a lot of, uh, different pop 
songs that were released during this time that kind of reflect how the general um, public sentiment was at that time, right? There were, were several songs that were a lot of, um, you know, like Major Tom is one that like immediately comes to my head where it's like, it's talking about this um, astronaut who is, you know, really thinking about how like his his research and like his going up into space is going to affect um, politically like, uh, you know, uh, Cold War tensions, right? As he comes home. Um, then, of course, there's Everybody Wants to Rule the World by right. Tears for Fears, which is like a classic. It's a bop and it's absolutely timeless, but it's also like another song that like details like those uh cold war tensions um and yeah you know like other other songs too um you know i can't really like really think of them but there are a lot of them that are like you know reflective of the time uh and like kind of headspace that people had um you know like if you listen to like a lot of like 80s songs like you know, I would say like Kids in America or, um, you know, uh, shoot, there was like a, like 99 Nuff Balloons uh, is also like a, another good one um, where it just kind of talks about, yeah, like again, like how people were feeling at the time with like um, issues of like the Berlin Wall, um, you know, like nuclear elimination on <laughs> both sides. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so you know, it's it's um, it's really interesting to compare those kinds of songs to like now, um, and I even like had a question like in one of my like tweets where it was like, you know, if you go to the, if you go to like any like uh global or like if you go to the U.S. like top fifty songs, a lot of the songs are very much about like romance and emotion, which is interesting, um, because you know in an in a in an era where it kind of seems like we're at like the most disconnected right from other people there's still like a lot of this um longing a lot of these like kind of club e kind of songs that are all about like oh you know like i'm here dancing you're here dancing we should dance together like that kind of music is still being produced and it's still like you know reaching the top of the chart so it's just it's really interesting Right. right um and you could interpret that like a number of different ways like you know maybe it's like you know like if you're a little bit more jaded like oh yeah you know it's just like another corporate like gimmick you know that they, they have a recipe they just put it together and then boom they release it onto the market right um or like you could also have like another interpretation where it's like mm, you know like maybe uh like in our heads we want to feel like more connected to other people uh, but we're not so like maybe perhaps like releasing these kinds of like songs about like romance and love and um you know uh interacting with like people uh perhaps that's like a way to kind of um like keep ourselves sane in a way um you know uh make us like a little bit stable that maybe like perhaps you know uh soon <laughs> Right. hopefully uh we're able to like go out and have those kinds of emotions again right so right. yeah there's like a there's many different ways that you can interpret a variety of like different songs and genres um and time pieces too so yeah it's interesting how um there like there are songs that speak to different movements that come out there's songs that speak to sort of counterculture that come out that like countering dominant and oppressive cultures and you think of and there's th that can happen in several ways from simple simply the oh i'm think i'm doubled again i think i hear myself through your your mic again oh no uh, i put you at like a super low volume yeah um oh so um maybe i was just talking louder then my bad <laughs> um but yeah where was i going I was going to, um, I was going to mention there's, there is a certain type of protest and revolution in just the aspect of using, like, indigenous language and music in the modern day. There's a statement being made in that, a statement of identity, which ends up being political due to all these, um, 
they effectively, you know, culturally genocidal programs to try to, you know, force dominant languages on people and to stop the, um, you know, stop the reproduction of indigenous language and of indigenous heritage. That, mm -hmm. um, and for example, I think of Shu, um, when there was the, the big earthquake, there was a big earthquake in Mexico and they wrote something about, um, the earthquake in, um, fuck, what was it? I don't think it was Zapotec. God, there was another one that we, and I feel so bad now, and this, because I, I, I remember being, like, I wrote it in my notebook, but my notebook's not next to me. But, um, the, um, there's another language in, like, the mountains of Oaxaca, in that area, and they wrote about how, like, the government hadn't given them relief and stuff, and, and hadn't helped with the crisis as much as they should have, and how that shows, you know, like, they don't care as much, and, like, that the reason why they're trying to get us to stop speaking their language is, like, is partly because they just don't want us around it so it's just a slower form of uh of of you know violence in that sense against against mm -hmm. this population and that's something i want to bring up and then after the break i was going to mention nwa and rap as counterculture but uh i have to run an ad break yeah. like literally right the fuck now because of amazon thanks huh i was keeping an eye on that pre-roll timer while also trying to remember what I, where i was going and like I'm trying to look at chat and see what messages I want to bring up. Mm -hmm. But it's fun. I, I love doing this. This is such a fun show to do. Yay! Yeah. Oh, um. So I t tweaked around with like the, my my mic. Are you able to hear yourself now? I don't think so. I'm not. I cannot. Yes. Okay. We fit. We we figured. I think it, out. it was just like. Yes. Yeah. It was uh, just like the wait. mic placement. I guess like wait. Uh. Barely. No. I. It, it's lighting up, but I'm not speaking. <sighs> <laughs> Motherfucker! All right. Okay, try it again. Uh, we're good. We're good. We're good. Okay. Yay. It wouldn't be an info dump without tech issues. I'm not gonna lie. Yay! Woo, we love it. It's usually my fault, but <laughs> <laughs> usually it's my fault. Yeah, James, thank you for redeeming 1,000 channel points to to um play Kevin screaming motherfucker. Uh, I have a soundboard on my channel that uh and and uh yeah that one was just played as we were dealing with tech issues that was kind of funny kind of like that <laughs> um but yeah uh i'm gonna bring up n w a and rap is counterculture in like five seconds uh but yeah um let's go ahead and okay folks welcome back from the ad break unless the ad break didn't go in which case fuck twitch um so we're gonna talk about a little bit of like nwa and rap as counterculture and how that's like a political statement and how that reflects the times and how it could, that can change opinions or galvanize them um and something i wanted to bring up and this is relating to what, ha what i was talking about before the break with like indigenous language music um how you can galvanize support for speaking a language or you can galvanize support of a certain identity through music how people can identify themselves through music and also create identities through music uh is very interesting with it, it, like not create but fortify identities through music um and i think that in the u.s um rap definitely showed the moment in the in the, the, the cultural moment very well um i mean like fuck the police for sure but in general uh, like in terms of of the um, the, like, and by that I mean like yeah, that song is is widely known for that. But I think rap in general of showing off African American vernacular English as a form of identity and talking about the problems in a very authentic, real way. I read something like this past week about the concept of real talk and how um, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant communities um, lack that. There's this culture of politeness and of um, you know, formalities and, and this order and discipline, and they don't talk about the real shit where they, they, because they, there's more importance placed on keeping a, a supposed peace, uh, as in a lack of conflict rather than an actual peace, which may involve conflict, you know, like in, interpersonal conflict from time to time to resolve issues and how it ignores the resolving issues by just ignoring the problem altogether. And how rap music shocks so many people and how it's um 
Well, like, like, a lot of these, you know, good Christian folk wouldn't dare listen to that devil's music, you know? Because it attacks this supposed, I imagined peace by ignoring problems. Um, what do you think, what, what are your thoughts sort of on sort of rap and, and, and music as identity and political identity? Mm-hmm. Is what I've, yeah. You know, I re- oh man rap to me has always like has always been like a really interesting subject in and of itself but like unfortunately i don't have a whole lot of knowledge of that specific genre um but i was i did watch this um this little like video uh like oh man i'm so sorry uh i know i shouldn't be using the bc boys as a representation of like the rap scene and i'm not i'm just like well i mean like quoting this video um yeah because like you know we don't uh you know with like white people like overtaking like uh, you know like p like by poc spaces um but the the thing that like i thought was really interesting about this video and it kind of like ties into like what you were saying um was that you know like in an interview the bc boys were talking about how like um at their time like uh, you know, you had like a lot of different uh, rap groups that were starting to become established, like rap and hip hop, um, especially. But the BC Boys, even though they were talking a lot about, you know, their experiences uh, living in New York, um, they it was really weird because like they were they were branded or like they were marketed as more appealing to white suburban audiences which was something that they were absolutely pissed off about and they were like you know like we're not rapping for like uh you know like mr johnny christian Dugooder, right. like you know living in a suburban household and like being having like this very sheltered environment no like we're not rapping for those kinds of people like we're creating music you know for um uh you know like for the boroughs like we're creating music for you know people within like our uh you know socioeconomics like status right like we're not creating music for suburbia we're creating like urban music right Right. um we're not we don't like want this like you know like kind of white polished image or whatever it is that you know like they were trying to do you know it's like we create this music and it comes from like this place of authenticity right right we're not trying to pose or like make ourselves into something that we're not and so you know it's really interesting because it's like i feel especially like in a lot of music um you know for example like take the weekend for example yeah um he very clearly makes like a lot of pop music especially with blinding lights right Right. like that is very clearly pop but you know um just because of his skin tone it's like oh well this isn't pop this is like now r&b right yeah um and it's really frustrating for black creators and black musicians to constantly be like in this category of like oh you know because you are of a certain like skin tone uh you know we are now deeming you into this box even though like if we were to listen to this music without tying like any like visual appearance to the individual we would put it in another category altogether right um and so you know i like i i have listened to like some uh like especially like 90s like rap and hip-hop and it feels it feels like very authentic it's it's like Mm -hmm. it's very genuine um and you know it's it like again it's just yeah it's just it's just it's really frustrating to like be a person of color especially like a black creator in a very like white dominant Mm -hmm. space um with like the music industry with the entertainment industry in general um you know, yeah, so. where the people at the top have this vested interest in maintaining a certain image that does not reflect reality. That that right. is it's 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 their culture that they want to present or instead of, you know, all cultures having a voice at the table. Mm-hmm. Uh something you brought up uh or that you mentioned that made me think of something and an important point I think is to bring up that we got to stop pigeonholing 
creators into holes based on their into into just different niches based on just their culture, their skin tone, their neurodivergency. Um, and I think um, crank gameplays. Uh, Ethan talked a little bit about this, where he, I'm not sure if he talked about it specifically, but he mentioned like you know he you know he's a creator who has ADHD who talks about you know how that affects his creation and and his um his YouTube from time to time. But, like, I think that's also important because we'll see, like, right now it's Black History Month, and folks, there's going to be a huge spike in buying stuff from black creators because people think, oh, yeah, we, we should support black creators. But then that drops off after Black History Month. Care about people yeah. every day. Support mm -hmm. artists, support black creators, support indigenous creators every day. You know, not just during their History Month where we're like, oh, we're going to think about them now, you know? Yeah, that's bullshit. Don't do virtue right? signaling. We don't do, do not support sig virtue signaling here. No, I'm never once gonna change my logo to a pride version for one month and then fucking not. And I just... No, yeah. I'm good. I don't like like I'm like you know don't don't say anything you know sexist, racist, homophobic in my chat. I'm very clear on that. You know, but then like I'm not like virtue signaling. Like okay, here's everything that I'm doing. Love me for this. No, if you're watching my content, I want you to watch my content because you like me as a content creator, not because, oh wow, look at these this white knighting, this virtual signaling. You know, but seriously, um, th there's a huge problem of just saying okay, this creator has autism. Therefore, we expect them to speak out on everything about autism. This creator is from Peru. We expect them to speak out on every Peruvian issue. This creator is black. I expect them to speak out and be a role, you know, like a, a not a role model, but a prototype for the community in effect. Prototype meaning, you know, yeah. this is the example that people are going to refer to first. That That's their model of it. The, the prototype in the psychological sense. Um, and we yeah, got to stop doing just, that. It's so frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they're creators. And there are, a one, there's wonderful creators of every, from every culture. And we got to stop saying, okay, you're from here. Now you have to do things about here. Right. Like, that's why, um, why Bruno Mars doesn't talk about his culture and ethnic heritage much. Mm -hmm. You know, because he want because uh, he just wants to be known as bruno mars and not be known for his music he doesn't want to be pigeonholed into a certain genre because of his latinidad right you know? also bruno mars like excellent performer i went to one of his concerts and it was amazing like at one point there was like fire on the stage and it was just ugh, yeah so good he's top notch oh absolutely uh and then let's see here um i wanted to i'm not going to read the whole comment right now um, but the the sort of concept of being in it for the money that that's in it. like sometimes like stuff gets too mainstream and people make it just for the money, and there is some truth to that, but it's not a full truth to that. I feel like where I I think that um there are people who will put stuff out for money. It's but it's not that they only make stuff that they put out for money. As a content creator, you gotta pay the fucking bills, you know. Like, yeah. you gotta, you, there is stuff that you know that will perform well, and that's what you do to make your money. That's your meat and potatoes, your bread and butter of your content. And for some artists, that might be a certain drawing style, a certain, you know, the poppy sound, or, you know, certain, like, whatever, whatever it is. And they'll put that out, and sometimes the heart won't be 110% in it, because they, they're like, okay, this is how I'm paying for my rent. You know? Yeah. Um, and Or if you're a bigger artist, maybe like an indoor pool or something. I don't know. But in general, people are going to put out stuff that is going to guarantee make money. Think about like like Alpha Rad Smash content. Think of like Ludwig with Rust in Among Us. Valkyrie with Among Us. Toast with Among Us. You know? People are going to put out videos that are their bread and butter, that are their cash cows. They're going to make money. And then there are passion projects. For me, my bread and butter, my cash cow, is League of Legends content and 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 getting over it. And and maybe soon Risk of Rain might become a bread and butter, we'll see. But anyways, there's some stuff that I do as a creator that I do because I enjoy, but also because it performs well. Mm -hmm. And then there's Infodump, 
which is a passion project of mine. It's important to me to uplift neurodiverse stories. It's a, important to give people voices. Uh, and that, you know, I that's stuff that I'm going to, it might get less views. Like, there, there's, I think that you could say that mainstream rap can have, you know, and mainstream any music can have songs that are just cash cows, that are just out there to make money and pay the bills. But I don't think there are, you know, popular creators right now who only do that. There's always going to be some songs of those that are passion projects. And they don't always have to be, like, deep. You can have a passion project just to make a catchy tune. But, like, you can tell, like, they're not, you can't always tell, but some people are able to see, like, if your heart's in it or not. Um, and how, what, to what degree it is. It's not that, okay, they hate this stuff, that, but they make it anyways, and then they make this other stuff because they like it. It is a very broad spectrum along this line. And I don't think most people, I think most people still, will, like, make music or make content because they like making it, at least to some degree. And then there's other stuff that they'll do, you know, like, it's the... It's, it's the meat and potatoes, and then, but the, it's it's not just, you don't have to pick if your heart's 100% in it or not, like, necessarily. Like, sometimes it happens, and sometimes it doesn't, and that's fine. Um, what is I going? But yeah, and I think, fuck, I lost it. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Um, train of thought. Um, yeah, I think that it's important that we let people, you know, like, make the content and, and and understand that sometimes it's not going to be their heart and soul in mp3 format um but also understand that creators are people too with individual lives and interests and thoughts and feelings um and that it's not watering down a media just to to put to, to create i think there's also this weird obsession with the purity of content it has to be the essence of the genre. It has to be like this. Oh. Fuck that. Make what you want to make, right? Like that's like in, in that sense. Like you, I feel like if we pigeonhole anyone into a, a, a niche, then we can we effectively limit what they are able to do and limit their capacity for creativity. The more we overstructure somebody else's life, um and what more over structure somebody else's content the more that we attempt to control them and give them less you know intellectual and creative freedom within their product um yeah let's see here do we do you have more to add about um music reflecting times and changing people's opinions or anything else you want to add about other stuff that maybe we missed or should we just go right into q a like just flat q a well, let's go into Q and A. All right, chat. Uh, what questions do you got for us? Anything that you want to hear us talk about that we didn't talk about yet? Something we want us to revisit? What? What? What do you want to? What do you want to hear here at the end for this Q and A? Uh, and you know, we're, we'll give some people some time. But if you have, like, for example, if you had questions for me or five questions for you, this would be a good time to add them in too. Um. Let's see. Um, what do you think, if there's something that you wanted people to take away from your experiences with music, what would you want them to take away? Um, music can be used as a space to process feelings and thoughts and even, you know, kind of changes your sense of time and space too like music is this absolutely wonderful thing that you know like especially now like in the middle of a pandemic where we can't travel at least you know listening to music might help us travel to different times or different places or different memories right whether we're listening to a song that we heard in childhood or we're listening to a period piece right um or even like heck i love personally like the tron soundtrack like that is like my go-to if i want to like listen to anything that's like instrumental um and that just like transports me like you know if i were like living inside of like you know that uh 
that that space where like Tron and Clue live. So right. it's um yeah, it's it, it's awesome. Like, you know, just transports you anywhere and everywhere you want to go. Absolutely. I have a question from Tiana in the chat. I was late, so I don't know if this can be talked about or was talked about, but any understandings on making a powerful album? Like what and so I think this like because this is a question that was asked the last time we had a like a music creator on. Uh, Lone Pine Live. And you'll hear his music in the background of my content pretty frequently. Um, but, you know, what What do you notice as somebody who consumes media and and, and organizes it in, in, in the ways that you do? How do you make, like, because I think this goes kind of into how do you make a, a banger playlist or something? You know, how do you make a like, powerful album and powerful playlist are pretty related in a way, and I think that's that's an interesting perspective that I'd like to maybe revisit some here. Uh -huh. And also your, your so, thoughts on it in general. Wait, so... Sorry, could could I, like, ask for, clar for clarification? Is it, like, what do I think makes, like, a powerful album? Powerful or... album. But also, okay. like, I think mentioning the playlist stuff could help with that, too, because mm -hmm. I think there's some... For example, there's some albums that I treat like a playlist. You know, there's some albums that you can mm -hmm. listen to start to finish, and it feels like like a playlist that's put together for a certain vibe. That there's like the carryover and the the recurring themes. In a sense, that's that's kind of my, my understanding of it. And correct me if I'm wrong, Tiana. And then, oh yeah, Tiana adds: Is there a way to get the same vibe as some of your favorite songs without just copying parts of it? Uh, if you answer the first one, I actually have an idea on the second one. Hmm. This is oh, this is an interesting question. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna use the playlist that I made for Josiah as an example, right? So, um, there were when, uh, like, in my head, you know, like the memories that I had of like, you know, this person, right? In this case, Josiah, right? Um, I basically just used a lot of songs that I mostly like associated to like a very like critical period of our friendship or like uh, we were learning a lot about each other right, right. and so uh, like especially like in one particular summer like a lot happened um and so a lot of like the memories that i had i associated to song and song lyrics that were that had like either themes right recurring themes like i think there was like a part in there um, where I had put in this incubus song called Wish You Were Here mm -hmm. where it was like um, you know it was like at that the summer that like your dad passed and so like I put in that song because it was like that you know that like caring you know for your for your for your parent right mm -hmm. and like you know wishing that they were like they're still with you um, you know like those kinds of like song lyrics that for me was like really impactful and that I was like you know like I can't like I can't imagine like going through that kind of pain but like you know I I want to like share like in a way that it's like you know like there's this a like, camaraderie and it's like yeah. if you if you need to like listen to the song you know like it's there if you ever need it um whereas like for other songs like clarity it's like those are more memories right uh and so you know like sometimes so it's like really funny like sometimes like in my like playlists I'll have like just really deep meaningful songs that are just like um you know like about revolution right. or about like you know like any mental like instability that i might have had at that moment like cap like captured into song lyrics but then there are other times where i just like have trash music like whatever like was li was popping on the radio like at the time i'm just like oh you know like that evokes a memory like oh i might have gone to prom or like i uh was like in a friend's car and i was like listening to the song so i'm right. just like gonna, gonna pop that in so like you know sometimes it's like who you associate it with right if sometimes like the mess the message of the song doesn't like really link up with like your own personal values or ideals like sometimes it's just like um you know like again like a memory with like a friend or something right um yeah i think that um what was i gonna mention oh i want to the, I, I feel like the idea of trash music, trash memory, anything, anyone, like, especially trash memories, what I'm gonna get in here. 
sometimes people will be like, oh, I don't know why I remember this thing. It's so, you know, puny and insignificant. It doesn't matter. It does. There is obviously a reason that the memory was significant to you or to your brain. There's a reason it sticks around. Um, sometimes it's not a good reason. Sometimes it's a wonderful reason. You know, I can't, you know, like, I, like there's a reason why when I think of my dad, I think of a specific night when I, uh, I, I, I sort of sat on the stairs while he used Dragon, the, you know, the, the, the voice-to-text Dragon software to voice-to-text to a sermon. You know, and the, the way that the sound would, would curve around the walls, bounce off the front door and go to the stair steps of the house from his, from his desk. You know, that memory of sound in that way. Um, and that has all the significant meaning and stuff, right? Why do I remember the fact that my dad called every smartphone an iPhone then? That seems pretty insignificant, right? You know, like, oh, it's just a stupid memory. Why? It's just gonna fade. No. Things stick in our memory because we find them important and they are important for that reason. Don't, I, I feel like whenever people downplay a memory and experience, it's just this conditioned response to try to fit a standard when you are the gold standard for yourself. And so what you remember as important is important. Um... And that's part of our individuality, is what, what in, the, in the experience of life, as we're, you know, running our hand through the sand, what grains of sand stick? What, what, what are the ones that stick around? And what are the ones that, you know, annoy us and end up getting into our pockets and never leave, right? But like, you know, you know but still, like, it's, 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 there's so many moments. And our memory is just a collection of the moments that we find important or interesting. Um, James asks, oh wait, I need to answer Tiana's thing. Um, is there a way to get the same vibe as some of your favorite songs about copying part of it? Yoink and twist. Take something that you like, right? Think about what they do and why they do it. I did this with learning how to throw a frisbee and learning how to swing a baseball bat. I would just think about what they did and how they did it do it and think about, well, how can I apply it? What do I like most about this method? My The way I swing a baseball bat is a mix of three or four different players and then a little bit of my own experience. The way I throw a frisbee is a mix of four or five different players that I emulated and then myself thinking about what they did, why they did it, and sort of making a mashup. And then from there, as you learn these mechanisms, learn these mechanics, learn what things are done and why they are done. You can do it for yourself with, with your own ideas. But you don't ha not everything needs to start from 100% scratch. There's no shame in starting at a point A from somebody else's project and going on your own journey with it. As long as you're not just literally copy-pasting and publishing as your own work. That's called plagiarism. That sucks. But if you are transformative, if you're doing the twist part of it, it's not just the yoink, it's not the copy-paste, it's also the spin you put on it, right? It's your own personal twist. Um, James asks, oh, so do you have anything to add to that, or do you think it, of what I just said for Tiana's question? Nope. I, yeah, it's good, yep. yep. So, James asks, <laughs> have you ever accidentally conditioned yourself with a song or melody? Like, are you talking, like, Pavlovian? Like, is this, is this, like, dog mouthwater when hear bell conditioning? Classical conditioning? Um... Yes, my loving. Okay. Oh boy. Oh boy. Um yeah, actually. Um so without giving like too much information cuz it's kind of like a a bit of like an embarrassing like right. period of like time for me also. Um there is this song by Franz Ferdinand that is that is like about a very like specific person and a person that I was just kind of uh, seeing at the time had the exact same name, right, as the right. song. And so like when I was like listening to that song by Franz Ferdinand, I was also like in my head imagining like this, like remembering like this person, right? right. Um, and so like even now, like years later, like if I ever like hear that song like on a shuffle playlist, I'm just like, oh, oh, like I'm reminded of like my friend like back, 
like way back when so yeah. yeah no definitely there have been some songs where i just like oh uh, you know like i'm i'm kind of like i have like a reaction to them or like yeah. you know a little bit more like sad still um uh around the time that like my last ex and i like broke up i was like updating my k-pop playlist and there are some songs that i still cannot listen to because it reminds me of like that breakup and like how painful it was yeah um especially like because we broke up in the middle of a pandemic too it's like it's even more painful still because it's like you know yeah. you, you're not really doing anything you with your life you just sit so. and suffer in that feeling right right yeah and you just like wallow in that so yeah. like yeah there are definitely like some songs i cannot listen to anymore yeah um folks we're going to take a quick ad break then i'm gonna apple i'm gonna come back to your comment because that's something i definitely want to read and share but uh twitch makes me run ads so fuck them um yep yeah. and yeah this is fun. I keep on, f yeah. I keep on fiddling around with like the, the um with the mute and stuff like on this like little device. Is it working? Like, can oh, it you works. Still hear yourself? It works. Okay. Toggle okay. toggle mute and push to talk are wonderful technologies. Yeah. 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 yeah so I've been okay. Wait. Okay, but now you can. Yeah. You know what's really weird? Like, I'll press like the um the mute button. But like my screen still f flashes green. It when you flash... talk, oh, when I talk, yeah. When you talk, yeah. Because when I talk, it shows that I'm talking. But when you talk, hear yourself in that last part. Nope. I did Don't not. Miss. Maybe Discord thinks something's happening, but there's not anything happening. I don't know. D Discord's weird with audio sometimes. Oh, that's so weird. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll keep on like toggling the mute button. You just like let me know if you hear yourself again. Will do. Cool. <sighs> I've got this sandwich here that I've been waiting to eat, but it's also like gonna be messy, so I'm waiting till <laughs> until it's like, like I'm not gonna do it until after yeah. this. And because then, then what I'm gonna do is after info dump I'm gonna eat and then go live with something gaming. I don't know, figure it out. But yeah. Uh anyways, um, here we go. Two, one. All right. So Apple's comment. Sometimes it can also be just sharing the song with someone else. Uh oh, Christina. What happened? There we go. Oh my God! I'm so sorry. <laughs> Again, uh, you're like, fine. You're fine. Computer, awful. You're fine. Anyways, yeah. yeah. Sometimes it can also be just sharing the song with someone else, sharing that moment of listening to the song together. For example, when my sister and I were younger, we would watch the movie Matilda a lot. There's a song in the movie called Send Me On My Way by Rusted Roots. Voice crack, what the heck? Um, the song was unsuccessful, got bad reviews and such. But to my sister and I, it is one of the greatest songs because we shared a bonding moment of watching the movie. To the point that we ended up doing a brother-sister dance to that song on her wedding day, which is very sweet. Um, but yeah, I feel you. Like, there's songs definitely that you think of somebody. I think of my friend Nelly every time I hear the song You Fooled Me by Divided by Friday, for example. There's definitely songs that will bring up memories of a different person. It's not, And, and often it's a good memory for me. I There's definitely some that I don't listen to due to a bad... Re yeah, look at that. Nelly's here. But yeah. I, um, yeah, every time I hear You Fool Me with Divided by Friday, I'm like, I should message Nelly, see what he's up to. Um, because it's just something I, you know, it's, 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 it's always going to be associated for me. It, and it's a, it's a banger, too. It's a really good song. Um, yeah. Here, here's an off-topic question. One of the hallmarks of Infodome is just wildly off-topic. Um, subs with mustard, yes or no? A nice deli mustard. mustard. A nice deli mustard. mustard. Stone ground. Yeah. Yeah. Um. What is it? Um. There's a certain one that I'm thinking of, but I can't remember now. I'm, don't remember my 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 deli training. You know, I used to know all the mustards. Um. Fuck. But yeah, it's a really good stone uh, ground mustard. Honey mustard, Dijon. Uh. I guess there's like. I don't know, it's like deli mustard is like one well, of Well, it's deli mustard, but there's a specific brand of deli mustard. Because it's a stone ground deli mustard. I'm assuming it's not Heinz. No. Right? No. Okay. No, it's, it's a bougie, or, it's a bougie or, one. 
Oh, it's not like French's either. It's bougie bougie. Well, okay. Bougie, I, I worked bougie. I worked in a bougie <laughs> deli. Ooh, so nice. yeah. Um. Well, James, I'm sorry that all the subways in your city decided to stop carrying mustard. Tell them that they're wrong, or at least tell corporate they're wrong. Or maybe this is the great mustard shortage of the pandemic, and everybody bought mustard because they're worried it was going to run out. And now you're wiping your ass with, you know, yellow mustard packets that you stole from McDonald's instead of toilet paper. Um, I'm still irritated about the toilet paper crisis at the start. When I walked into QFC and all the toilet paper was gone, I was like, what the just, fuck? Just so frustrating. I just, yeah. ugh, but Dave's God. sales must have skyrocketed, too. Yeah, and, like, especially that guy who bought all of the essential materials and kept them in his inside his garage and upticked the price... And then Amazon had to like, because he was like yeah. selling all of his materials through Amazon and Amazon like just completely removed him like from the site. Yeah. And then he was just, you know, stuck with like a whole bunch of like, uh, you know, Clorox wipes, yeah. paper towel, toilet paper, hand sanitizer, like. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> so subs are named after submarines. So does that mean they didn't exist before submarine? Um. I mean, the name for the sandwich changed over time. It used to be like a bracer or something in the medieval times, that kind of thing, where you'd have like a big chunk of bread and you put some meat and cheese and shit in there. And it was like, there's something, it's not Ooh, bracer, you know it's something, what? it's, but yeah, the, the names evolve over time. I have a question for the chat. Uh, what's the difference between a sub and a po' boy? Especially if you're like, you're from New Orleans like that, from Yo, the Louisiana area. It's a good question. I'll let chat think yeah. about that. Um, but yeah, there's... Yeah, is there a type of song that I like to listen to when eating? Uh, generally, like, bistro cafe music, honestly. Um, I think my time in Oaxaca, I definitely chose the restaurants that would have live music performing. As, as there's often restaurants where, like, on the weekends, there'd be live performers. And then in the U.S., it's because in the U.S., I always did that. But I think... My time in Oaxaca, hearing a lot of, what genre would I call it? It's not really folk, but it's not really like country or it's not like it's it's like, but there's a certain I don't know. It's it's like sort of soft ballads, but it gives off like bistro vibes. I don't know, it's the best way to put. It. But like that kind of music is something I like to listen to while eating. Um, I also listen to, sometimes I listen to classical music when eating just because it's something that my dad had in his house a lot. And then video game music sometimes. Um, so James. Yeah, we're a, yeah, we're a bossa nova household. Yeah. Um, we're also like, a, you know, like if you go on YouTube and like look up like coffee house jazz or something like yeah. that, like we'll put that on. And like, that's what we've been putting on for like the last like ugh, several months. <laughs> right. Um, James says, a po' boy always seems like that type of sandwich where, according to the grandma of an old friend of mine, where it was the scraps and leftovers of other sandwiches thrown together. So like a cheap, surprise me fam type of sandwich. Makes sense. That, that does make sense. Um, let's see here. Any other questions or comments from the chat? Or anything for, any questions you have for me? Yeah, I don't. I haven't thought of any. Yeah, that's um. fair. No, it's fine. It's definitely more of a what's the the natural things that come up. Yes. Why do you think bistro music is just? Do, oh no, not why do. It's just do you think bistro music is just elevator music with style? In the sense of elevator music being an atmospheric type of music. Um. Yes. In the sense that elevator music is a derogatory term. No. I think that people tend to insult the concept of elevator music, and there's some that is like definitely like over the top, like okay, what the hell. But atmospheric sound is an important aspect of music that I feel oft gets overlooked, and oft gets sort of, you know, it, it often loses value in people's minds just because people are like, oh, it's just elevator music, you know, oh, it's just you know, it's just it's just for this. But no, it's like there's an art to constructing a space and a feeling within it 
and it plays an important part. Um, what do you think? I like imagine watching a movie without like any background music. Like it's really interesting because like as we watch a movie, we don't really we don't like subconsciously like realize it, but the music that we hear plays like a lot into our emotions. Um, you know, like I um I recently watched Gone Girl and Soul recently, and both of the soundtracks for each of the movies were produced by um Trent Reznor and another guy named Atticus, and I forget yeah, his last name. Oh, so my bad. Some other but... fucker named Atticus, you know. Oh no. Exactly. Um, that, that yeah, thing, like, like not, not like not to poop on your guys' efforts. I think you guys are great. But uh, um yeah, and it was really interesting because it's like, you know, like in my head, I think Trent Reznor, Nine Inch Nails, like I think of this like kind of industrial-y kind of like music, but like to see like his like influence on like both of these m movies and both of them have like a very different feel to them. Like if you watched them, like one is like, uh, you know, like a murder mystery of sorts. And then the other one is a Disney film about souls. Um, right. <laughs> so it's like, it's it's really interesting how one it's like you're you're feeling with the the instrumental music the background music is making you feel like super stressed and super like tense and just uh like what's gonna happen next and then the other one is like in some points it's like oh you know like we're this is this is a kind of music that we're listening to when we're getting used to a world right so i would um, I would say like a lot of Pixar songs especially have a lot of world building music at the mm -hmm. start of it where it's like um, you hear this a lot especially in WALL-E um, I want to say like Inside Out um, uh, and like other like other like movies that I'm like kind of forgetting but yeah it's like you have like that nice like tinkle like at the very like beginning and then you know like eventually it starts to like morph itself into like more like serious like music um mm -hmm. but yeah no it's 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 interesting like how it all like connects to like our feelings um on a much sadder and horrible horrible note there is a city uh maybe it's like ugh, man i think it's like san francisco but like it's a it's a city in california where um they use that kind of sonic dissonance as a way to uh bar people from uh sleeping out on the streets mm -hmm. right so it um it's like this um form of clearing the homeless from the streets because uh out on the speakers it plays this kind of music it's not even music it's just sound really horrible sound right and that makes you f that is intended to make you feel extremely anxious so obviously if you spend a prolonged period of time like in that specific area then you know you know you're going to feel very like mentally unwell right. um so yeah it's like we don't really consciously like think about it but music like really does play a whole heck of a lot into the experiences and the emotions that we have in the moment oh yeah um yeah i'm just gonna see james's response i don't look down on elevator music for the sake of being elevator music i think the joke potential is pretty good so appreciate it they don't need to put it there background music is very influential have you ever played a video game with the background music turned off try playing skyrim with the music turned off and it feels almost entirely different which, yeah, I, like, I wasn't accusing you of being like, oh, fuck elevator music. No, I'm just saying, like, it's something that happens a lot in, 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 in Trains of Thought. Um, you know, it's, it's, people definitely look down on it because of, you know, people say, oh, it's just for this. And like, I, I wasn't saying that it was you. I was just using it, that, that, point, that question to explore a point. Um, but yeah, background music is very important. And you, they don't need to put music in elevators. You're right. Do you know how fucking creepy a silent elevator is? It's fucking creepy. So I think that good elevator music, um, or just elevator music in general, and, and spatial sound in general is very good and when used correctly. It also has very good, very high potential evils. Um, Tiana says, has anyone heard the Julie and the Phantoms music? It's literally so good that it will help you write music when you weren't even planning on it. Personally, it helps reduce depression, increase motivation, important is important music to you yeah i think that everybody has music that speaks to them specifically and and i think that 
and I and I and I haven't I haven't personally heard Julian the Phantoms, um, but I definitely have songs where yeah, it helps me, you know, it helps me get stuff done and sort of perks me up. I uh, resonate it with it deeply, resonate with it deeply, um, and that's definitely I don't know, it's definitely something I experience. And there's I'm sure you have soundtracks that you're like yeah, this this is the shit, you know, like this is this is something that's gonna help me get through the day, get through the assignment. Uh, just, you know, elevate an experience. The, uh, Tron Legacy yep, soundtrack? Yep, exactly. Exactly. Uh-huh. Um, it's a mood. Also, yeah. the Super Mario Galaxy soundtrack. Oh, yeah. Also gets me through the day. Also Odyssey. I feel like, yeah, no, like, Super Mario Galaxy to me was what Animal Crossing was like to a lot of people, where it was like, you know, if your parents are fighting in the background and, like, threatening divorce, you're just like, okay, you know, I'm just gonna play on the <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Like, I'm like <laughs> my parents were like never threatening divorce, but like you know, it, as a meme, as a meme. Yeah. No, that's funny. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I need to do an info dump on dark humor and referential humor and stuff because I, I feel like there's a lot of misconceptions around it that I have a pretty good handle on. I I think for when most most white guys when they say oh yeah I have dark humor people are like oh right here comes the racism, but that's not my dark humor at all. It's like oh I make dad jokes and i i make jokes around morbid morbidity and 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 that kind of experience because that's something i've experienced but it's not like you know i'm not just making over generalizations with it it's definitely like a humor that's been tailored to an experience and that other people can relate to and i think relating through humor is good but anyways um nelly asks an, an interesting question uh and it's one you know it's one of the the big ones right do you have a favorite song or is it too hard to pick one my favorite song is Secrets by One Republic. Ooh. Um, wow, you picked that one super quick. Oh my I, gosh, just I didn't because even get the, the ch- Yeah, it's just the one that sits me. And here's, there's some, I, I can give you time to think because I also have reasons why. Um, um, oh, you know what? I do, I do have one. Um, so one of my favorite songs at the moment, uh, thank God for on repeat on mm-hmm. Spotify. Uh, trophy personally um it's a yeah it's a song by charlie xcx yeah uh and it's just it's so like upbeat i really like the rhythm um that that's what gets me hyped personally so it's really good yeah um for me secrets it relates to the movie the sorcerer's apprentice the Di- you know the disney oh, movie with yeah. nicholas cage in the old man nicholas shoes cage. but there's a scene where nicholas they're cage. inside a tesla coil and the electricity is going to the beat of secrets by one republic and regardless of how there's a lot of cringe stuff in that movie special effects are good but there's a lot of cringe performance in that movie i think nicholas cage acted very well i just think that it was written cringe um and but like the, the way that song was used in the movie um i always relate back to that it's also something that i i watched a lot with my brother and my dad and it's it's a wonderful i think it's a wonderful song anyways just the way it progresses through and the, and the message within it I, I don't know, there's a lot of aspects here that make it my favorite um your favorite is death of a bachelor by panic at the disco that's a really good one yeah what's your favorite I can't song i can't listen to that song anymore <laughs> oh no is that one of the... that's like another yeah that's another one of the um y- you know uh college x uh songs i cannot listen to that song anymore Oof. Which Oof, is a shame because it's, it's a, a gr- it's a great song. It's a great song. It's like a total bob. But like every single time I listen to it, it's just like I remember him absolutely failing to hit the high note every single time. Oof. Like every single time we would go to karaoke, he would always insist on hitting the high note, and I'm like, dude, you can't sing. You can't and sing. And then he'd be like, no, yeah. And he was like, you can't <laughs> sing. Like how dare you? Like my mom used to tell me I could sing all the time when I was a mom kid. Was and wrong. Yeah. Your mom yeah, lied so. to you. I'm sorry to break Your it to you. Your mom lied to you. I'm, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Deathbed coffee for your head is a close second. Nice. Nelly, what's yours? Uh, <laughs> we or your parents are still being together. You only get one. Nice. So your favorite, Nelly, is Battle Scars by Lupe and Guy Sebastians. There's Guy Sebastian. Singular. Um... I haven't heard that I should that also one. probably say um, The Reeling by Passion Pit is also a good one. Um, I think, like, if we're talking about, like, favorite of, like, all, all, all time, that one is, like, super personal to me because a lot of it is, like, um, 
like uh sonically it's like there there is like some disorientation that kind of comes with the song but it's also like super poppy and like super happy um it's like it's like it's like a song on pixie sticks in a way right um and i and i really like it um and the lyrics are pretty like dark um it's like you know trying to grapple um the the singer uh has uh bipolar disorder and a lot of his songs talk about that um whole uh bipolar nature that just happens like in his head and like how he deals with it and that particular song is like for me it's like it's very emblematic of like those like extreme highs and lows that like i feel like in my everyday life um and it's it's like soothing in a way because it's like you know somebody else like also experiences those like highs and lows and has produced it into like this very beautiful song in my opinion oh absolutely um sweet do we have other comments or questions from the chat uh as we head to wrapping it up here this has been a really good one this is really fun. Yeah, I love songs. Yeah, I agree. I, there are some songs you can relate to every word. Um, also, my favorite song in Spanish right now is Gaiotica Belleza by... Oh, fuck. It's on my Twitch page. Um, The artist. Could somebody go to my About Me section on my page and just copy and paste the artist for Gaiotica Belleza? Because I forgot. I think it's Esteban, but I don't remember. And, yeah, could somebody... Help me out, chat. Esteban. Thank you, Nelly. Yeah, it's um, I'd, I'd give it a listen sometime. It's really good. Um, it it takes me on a a journey. Like if I close my eyes and listen to it, it takes me on a journey that very few songs can. Just like it feels like I go to very to several different environments. Volveré huh. by Quepas de la Sierra. That's a pretty good one. If I remember it correctly, I might not remember it correctly. Sometimes I get songs mixed up. There's a long time that I I thought dust in the wind was by a different artist so like you know and somebody somebody corrected me on that very harshly on the internet no 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 you want to hear the worst part yeah okay so if we're talking about like bilingualism uh selena quintanilla was like huge you know like and she still is like a huge like tex-mex icon for sure um but when i was really really little I heard the song La Isla Bonita yeah. and in my head I honest to god until I was about 20 I thought La Isla Bonita was by Selena it's not it's by Madonna <laughs> <laughs> that is like the biggest like Oof. you know it's like if you could have disrespected an iconic singer's like legacy like there's no worse way than like what I like did in like my assumption I think that's a it, that's ho- no i don't think your assumption disrespected selena i think i don't think i i think that's what you call a misconception that's not like slander or libel i don't think that's prosecutable in in the moral court like i think you're fine because when i was because when i was little like it never occurred in my head that like an english speaker would sing or would try to like sing songs in Spanish, right? And like back at that time, like because the melody is a little bit strong, I wasn't really picking up the accent. But then like when I talked to my mom about it, she was just like, you can hear Madonna's accent super clearly in the song. Like what is wrong with you? Oof. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Madonna's Hispanic apple. I don't believe so. I think she's wider she's, than bread. She's not. No, she's not, but her daughter, is half so her yeah. daughter is like the yeah. i think she's like half spaniard or something i'm not i'm not sure something along those lines yeah oh my guest yeah they are um they are hispanic they are do you would you identify as which 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 word in within latinidad would you identify with it, his, oh uh yeah hispanic hispanic, hispanic is accurate yeah um, hispanic is accurate. yeah yeah because like let latino includes uh brazil too Mm -hmm. right so it's like any like from everyone from like central and south america is like under the latino comp uh right like box but like hispanic is like every single like country that's been um colonized by spain so yeah hispanic latino both are accurate makes sense yeah it was more of asking Mm -hmm. uh, what do you auto identify with because i yeah Oh, do you so Apple wants to know? Do you like Mana? Or Mana? I can't remember how to pronounce his name. Uh, Mana is actually one of my mom's favorite groups. 
Uh, that was one of the songs that, or that was one of the bands that I listened to a lot when I was living in California. Not so much once I moved up to the Pacific Northwest, um, but yeah, definitely a lot in Southern California, especially because um, it wasn't just like my parents that were listening to Mana, but it was also like our neighbors, our family friends, right? So like I was really ex like exposed to that band uh, right. when I was a lot younger. That makes sense. That's good. And yeah, James, you got it right. And yeah, Juanis is actually on the list of music that was, uh, you know, within the forefront within the of, of music in, in childhood. Juanis is one of my favorites as well. I just I, I love his voice. He's really, really yeah. good, really good artist. I saw, I saw Juanis live. Uh, that was also another one of like the groups I saw. Um, super good, super yeah. good show. Show. Yeah. yeah. I have gone to have... one concert live like one big concert live ever and it was the jonas brothers when i was like 10. oh i also went to go see the jonas brothers when i was like in middle school it was yeah it was it was it was a crazy experience because yeah. like i remember just being like so because that's like when i was entering like my more grunge phase and i was like man like i really hate just like being around all these teenage girls because i'm not like them like i'm grunge or like whatever but you know like looking back on those memories i'm just like you know what they did make some bops like mandy by the jonas yeah. brothers one of my favorite yeah. songs of all time oh yeah um oh, what was yeah. funny about my experience going to the um the jonas brothers concert is it was at the the dome the tacoma dome and we were in the super nosebleeds like the literal highest seat in the building and that's when i realized i'm afraid of heights like, oh, no. I had white knuckles gripping the seat because I thought I was going to fall to my death. Like, there is something yeah, about the nosebleeds like, within the dome. Like, it's sl the slant so... is awful. Yeah. It's like, oh, God. But yeah. Um, James mentions uh, you've, that you, your stepdad loves man Mana. He went to one of their concerts a few years ago and had the most fun I think I've ever seen him have. Nice. Uh, you've only been to one concert as well apple and it was leonard skinner i wish i could have gone to a leonard skinner concert that sounds like i, I bet that group is an, an incredible entertaining concert um your first so james has been to three concerts the first was motionless and white and asking alexandria the other two were mayday parade of, on other shows i would have wanted to go to i really like the mayday parade um, it's a very strong emo phase right there <laughs> yeah Oh, mom, I agree. I hate, I hate, I hate the nosebleeds. They're the worst. The ones at T-Mobile Park aren't that bad. The ones at T-Mobile Park, for baseball terms, aren't that bad. They, they're pretty like nested in where you can still see the field really well without having a slant that that makes you think bad thoughts. Um, but yeah, concerts are definitely some of the best environments for getting music highs. Yeah, and I agree. <laughs> Emo phase, nah, lifestyle. That's funny. Yeah. Um, Style, yep. Yeah. yeah, I think that I would like to go to more concerts in the future. Um, I've been to, I've been to like show I, I like I differentiate between like concert and show, and uh, and also like um I differentiate between that and like an orchestra performance because I've been to the orchestra. If I can make myself sound more like you know like a privileged white kid like oh yeah I went to the orchestra like four times when I was growing up, you know Starbucks, um. But yeah, like, there's a difference between, like, going to the orchestra versus going to a concert versus going to, like, a performance, I think. Because I think the concert, the word concert to me speaks to the, the grandeur, the size um, of it. Whereas a show is a performance. And it's not, it's not just a performance. It's a performance. But it's not with, it's not, it doesn't have the same size and atmosphere of it. What would you call a general audience, like, show? Like, or yeah, show concert? or performance. Like, let's. Like, I remember seeing the Arctic Monkeys at the Roseland Theater, um, which is, like, a very sh small, like, concert venue. Uh, it was general audience at the time. So, you know, like, I was, sta I was like, maybe, like, a row behind. I think... Um, it would be, like, the equivalent of the show box, right? Like, if, oh, you, yeah, were, yeah. if you were going That's to, like, concert. a show, show box, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, like... Yeah, it's, like... Is it a show? Is it a concert? Yeah. Oh, no, I'm talking about, like, an audience of maybe 150 people type thing where like you go to like a for example stand up there's a difference between going to a stand up show in say Madison Square Gardens which I've never been to or going to Yuck Yuck Comedy Club in Vancouver BC not even kidding 
um, which is a venue with 85 seats. You know, there's a difference between those two things. Hey, you know, like, let's go to the Yuck Yuck yeah, on it's, Saturday. Yeah, it's a great one. Yeah, Apple asks, what is the drink you have? What's, what did you get from Starbucks? Oh my god, I'm really basic. Uh, every, like, it doesn't matter what season it is. Uh, it could be dead ass in the middle of winter. Uh, we could be, uh, like, under 10 feet of snow. I'll always get myself, like, a peppermint mocha frappuccino mm -hmm. every single time without fail. Signature yeah. iconic drink. Oh, yeah. Um... Oh, you had a chance to go to the Trans-Siberian Orchestra in 2019, but ended up not going because you're sick? Rip, James. Do we think Starbucks will serve Irish coffee soon? No. I don't believe so. It'd be nice, but I don't think they will. Um, yeah. Any other questions before we wrap this up here? I'm trying to decide, folks, if we have to run another ad break. If we get more questions, I'm happy to run another ad break and keep doing it. But if we're down to, like, if everybody's asked what they want to ask, then we can, you know, converse about it in the Discord. And, well, like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go live later. You can talk about it when I'm live later. Um, there's also, I'm going to post this to YouTube and such. What's the meaning of life? I think the meaning of life is... It's what you make. I mean, the meaning is what you make of it, right? What what meaning do you want it to have? It can have several meanings. To me, it's uplifting stories, collecting moments, influence, influencing the people around me to to be, to feel better, to do better, try to make the world a better place. That's kind of my meaning of life. I guess my vocation would be the better word to use. But um, I think you don't have to make something have one meaning. Yeah. You're just joking? Fair. But I still gave a serious answer, so. But yeah. Um Do you um, do you want to touch on yeah, it? Yeah, like a Yeah, like a great uh generational prophet, Hannah Montana, aka Miley Cyrus said, Life's what you make it. So let's make it right. Yep. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Alright. Uh my mom says thank you for coming on. I'm sure everyone else in chat is very grateful. That, that you came on the show. This has been wonderful. Uh, I'm going to give... Y'all have about a minute and a half to see if there's any other questions. And if there's not any other questions in a minute and a half, we're going to go ahead and call it for info dump for the night. Um, but yeah. Any final thoughts? Um, Yeah, thank you for giving me the, the time and the space. Um... Uh to you know like express like all of these like inner thoughts oh yeah right? absolutely um yeah and yeah and thank you chat for uh asking like really interesting questions like a lot of these i haven't like really considered before and yeah, yeah it's uh it's been it's been really awesome to like spend this time with you all um and yeah thanks again josiah for like let me delve a little bit more into like my obsessions yeah. with music because oh, ah, it's <laughs> i think that's the wonderful thing yeah. about info dump where we create the space to introspect by sharing it's something that people don't think about the, the concert introspecting by by sharing but when you're allowed to freely talk about what you want to talk about it's a healing process really it it's whether the whether or not you have like you know deep wounds it's it's healing just to, to, to be yourself unapologetically Right, and like that's the idea of like share your interests because that's something that really represents you is what you, what you're passionate about, right? That in my mind, that's like if somebody's passionate about something, I think I I think that represents them fairly well in in many ways, and so I think that being able to share said passions, it's it's a wonderful, wonderful thing, and it's a something I didn't really see in media before, and that's why we created InfoDump. Well, folks, uh, y'all have a wonderful night. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead. Is there should I raid somebody from info dump may as well? Let me see And then I'll just I'll go back live later Um, oh, I know what I can do. I know who we can raid Uh, it was 1k and then I upped it Because yeah, I just want to make sure that people who are watching, who want to guide the raid, know the content we're going for. But folks, if you are subscribed to me, go ahead and copy this raid message. 
if you are not subscribed to me, please follow the raid anyways. It's fine. We're not we we don't we're not discriminating. It's just that you can't use the emotes if you're not subscribed. That's just how Twitch works. Make sure to copy one of these two messages. Yep. One of these two messages. Um and show that you got it copied just like James just did. Uh and yeah, we're going to go over to my one of my newer uh, Twitch friends Twerky Lee, who's doing a food and drink stream, and I'm really curious. Uh, and then I'm going to eat while I watch the food and drink stream, and then I'll go live later. Uh, yeah, uh, Christine, I'd love to have you on again in the future if you want. It's been great having you on this time. It's it's gonna go on YouTube this Sunday, and that'll be good. Ooh, yay. Yeah, the VOD will go up. It's not gonna be edited because I, I'm, editing stresses me out. But yeah, folks. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful night. I hope to see some of you again later on um, because, yeah, it's, it's fun to have people around. And, yeah, let's go send Twerky Laser Love. Rating.